Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Dennis Borosh and today I'm going to teach you how to think in systems and not just opening moves. So the person we're going to follow in this lecture is none other than the famous Bobby Fischer. So in the beginning of the game, you can play plenty of moves. A, getting the center squares immediately. B, trying to take away some squares from your opponent. However, Fischer liked to get his own center. Therefore, we're going to take a look at e4 systems. e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. And this will be the critical move that we're going to look at. Fischer loved putting the bishop on c4. And I'll explain to you why it's such a great move. A, it targets the all too weak f7 pawn and also prepares this idea of a castle. Therefore, it's a very useful little move. Bishop c5 was played by the other grandmaster opponent. He played Ruben Fine. And guess what? Even Fischer loved the evens gambit. Played b4. Bishop takes b4, c3, bishop a5, d4. Same idea, trying to take the center and noticing that black's king is stuck in the middle. If white would have played queen b3 earlier on, black could just defend this and prepare castling in short order. But Fischer insists, plays d4, and Reuben already makes a mistake, takes on d4, when in fact d6 is the better move. He takes d4, castles. And this is actually kind of the idea of these bishop c4 systems. Not only do you put pressure, but you sort of prepare quick development for your pieces. D takes c3, queen b3, eyeing that pawn. And this is actually one of those things that makes Fischer so special. He embarks on a mission of targeting the f7 pawn, and he goes for it. Queen e7, knight takes c3. And even though white is down a couple of pawns, he actually has plenty of development while black's pieces are still sort of in the garage, not doing too much. Knight f6, knight d5, immediately winning time, attacking the lady and preparing bishop a3 ideas. Knight takes d5, he takes, knight e5, takes, takes, bishop b2. Now bishop b2 is a very strong move. Because not only do you get and prepare this rook to embark in the mission and join the fray, but you also win time with attacking the queen. King g5, h4. Just destabilizing that queen so it cannot defend that pawn no longer. Queen h4, bishop takes g7, rook g8, rook e1 check, king d8, probably bishop takes e1 would lead to the same thing as the rook would join up for the battle. King d8, after queen g3, black resigned because even if black takes on g3, there is bishop f6 mate, the king is boxed in and there's no way to hide for the king on d8. A quick win, quite a nice win for Bobby Fischer. But then again comes the big question, can you do this if your opponent switches it up. What if the opponent plays the Sicilian and not attempts to play the Spanish? Let's take a look at that one. So e4, and instead of e5 that was played in that Bobby Fischer Ruben Fine game, what if black plays c5? And here comes actually the big question that you always have to answer. Are you going to have different systems every single time you face a different opening, or are you going to base it on one idea? Here Fischer goes again with the same concept he devised, the bishop c4 system. Knight f3, knight c6, d4, takes, takes, here, here, d6, and this is called the open Sicilian. Now, you can notice that a pawn is not on e5, so this pawn is not as weak on f7 as it was in the previous game. So it's a completely different structure and ideas in this situation. But Fischer is consistent. He still puts the bishop on c4 and puts pressure on f7. 
However, he's going to deal with a different set of problems. E6, and this makes the whole difference. The pawn on f7 is actually well defended by this e6 pawn. So white will come up with a different plan. Bishop b3, avoiding any future d5 pushes because notice this bishop is OA and it's not in danger. If the pawn pushes, it won't attack the bishop on c4. Bishop e7, bishop e3, over defending these center pieces. a6, f4. And this is a move that I like a lot. It doesn't really show his true intention. Doesn't tell if he's going to castle short or castle long, which is actually a possibility. Queen c7. In fact, here, why does have gone queen e2, preparing long castles, and we would get a typical Velimirovic structure named after the famous Yugoslavian player who is a famous, famous tactician, second on only to Mihal Ta. So queen e2, long castles is a big idea and go with g4. So f4 is sort of keeping black in limbo, not telling the intentions. Queen c7, and now Fischer decides to castle. So at the moment, this bishop on b3 isn't doing a whole bunch. However, if you understand what the bishop is set out to do, you'll notice that the goal is to put pressure on that f7 pawn. But for that, you've got to use the methods of the nutcracker, knight a5, queen f3, castles, f5. And the idea is simple. You are just going to put as much pressure as possible on this square and then start roaming down the pawn with g4, g5. But the biggest point is you're trying to soften that square as after e5 has been played, knight d2, this bishop gets a target on f7, not to mention this all critical d5 square. Knight takes b3, trying to eliminate that bishop, but it actually helps white structure. So even though white lost the bishop pair, white structure did get improved. b5. Now in this situation, black is almost okay. However, this weakness on d5 proved to be fatal. g4, preparing this idea of g4, g5, and now Fischer changes tack and goes for center action. b4, g5. Sometimes you can defend your pieces, but sometimes you can just go for counter-attacking. b takes c3, g takes f6, hitting that bishop, bishop takes f6, b takes c3, and that is actually a very strong move. The difference is if you take with the knight, yes, you are getting closer to this square, but black is just in time to stop you from landing your knight over there. If knight d5, bishop takes, e takes, and this pawn on c2 is falling. So instead, Fischer takes with the pawn and prepares this idea of c4, bolstering this d5 square. So what did Fischer use so far? A, he was very faithful to his concept of putting the bishop on c4 and pressing on this long diagonal. Now, that bishop was gone after this knight a5, knight takes b3 plan. However, he switches it up now. Once he got this weakening move by the opponent, he tries to get control over the d5 square. Bishop b7, c4. Also another positive way of looking at Fischer's chess, notice that anytime he has an option to take with pawns, he always takes towards the center. And look at that, it actually is super useful as he has control over the all-important d5 square. Now black realizes that trouble is brewing as knight c3, knight d5 is about to commence. Let's say if rook d8, rook d1, h6, just creating a little luft, knight c3, rook c8, knight d5, bishop takes d5, rook takes d5, white would be much, much better. One thing is that this bishop is very bad facing its own pawns. Second of all, after taking with a piece, that is a rook, black will be saddened with two pawn weaknesses on a6 and d6, and white is in total control. Therefore, instead of going rook fd8, black ventured to give up a pawn for activity. However, Fischer knows about long-term goals, and he takes this pawn, saying, hey, you can take this exchange. 
but my tripled connected pawns will do the deed at the end of the day. e4, queen g3. Saying the end game is just perfect for me, your bishop is facing a wall of pawns on this side, this end game will be perfect for me. Takes, knight takes, bishop takes, rook takes. F6 and king f2. Another very nice move over defending his own pieces, that is Bobby Fischer. And he doesn't get tempted with taking on e4 because that would just give an open file for the rooks. Notice after king f2, these rooks are good and they're of course worth more than these light pieces. However, they don't have open files to work with. All of them are closed down and this semi-open file is just open for white's rook. This rook is saddened by rook looking at that pawn on a6. Rook e8, rook d1. Always put your rook behind the passed pawn. So it'll be always supported and promotion is much more likely in that case. a5, c5. And now those pawns make a march for it. Rook d8, c4, a4. Trying to undermine Fischer's structure. However, Fischer is not convinced as now the phalanx of pawns are roaming down the board and it is no way of stopping them from queening. a3, b5, a2, rook a1. Not panicking at all, just making sure this pawn is at a standstill. And now these four connected pawns, which is a rarity in modern chess, is going to decide the game. Rook a4, c6. You can't really take that pawn because you would lose a piece, which is worth much, much more. Bishop c8. And after bishop b6, black resigned because after rook e8, d6, and with this bishop, Controlling the d8 square, d7 is unstoppable, forking and threatening to promote the queen. And this is actually the reason you should choose an opening. That is what I advise for you to do. The bishop c4 system devised by Bobby Fischer. And then you know what to do. A, you want to open it up for your bishop in the long diagonal, as happened in the game between Fischer and Haman. And then you will get other extra targets in the position. So I really hope you enjoyed this lecture on how to find openings and find systems that correlate with each other. And this is actually the much, much best and better way to look at chess because if you find the perfect systems for you, you'll achieve great results as Bob Vischer achieved himself. So thank you so much for watching and hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.